All right, that beautiful video and vocals is one who was done by our guest today. He's one of the most notable artists, African artists based in Dubai. And he's come back to promote his music and his career here in Nigeria. We can't wait to speak with him. We have with us MKO, not Abiola, seated in the studio. Good to have you. Good Thank to have you, you in the Thanks studio. What is, I, I yeah, actually, what, what is what MKO, MKO right? Um, MKO is my initials. You know, I've... I've, I've always wanted to have, you know, my name as my stage name, and I figured, what's the best way to go about it? So I went with MKO. Okay, so what's your full name? So it's Madu Abuchi Kingsley Oppo. Yeah. So You're evil! I am. So imagine, you know, asking people to say Madu Abuchi in, you know, in Dubai or in the office and stuff. It was, it's just a bit of a stretch, even though I'm very proud of uh, my, my Madu okay. Abuchi. So I just figured MKO, make it easy, nice and sweet. Well, and anyway, when I went with that, I didn't think about, you know, MK or Abiola at the time. Our, then, yeah. <laughs> it, it sort of paid off because it seems each time I talk about MK, it, it makes people intrigued in a way. <laughs> and it resonates in people because it's a name or rather an abbreviation that is so familiar to everyone We will everyone not here. easily forget. At least exactly. for us here in Nigeria, we will not easily forget your name. And you'd be surprised when I travel as well to other countries, people no Abiola obviously and instantly they picked that up I mean when I was in Ghana quite recently and it's the same thing you know I had that interview and they had to link it with you know the the whole story and everything and I'm like it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that way but yeah <laughs> but does it does it does it mess up your search engine I'll give you an example Larry Gaga yeah the other day someone said to me oh he shouldn't have chosen that name because when you now go on Google and type it in the first thing you're going to see is Lady Gaga mm -hmm. and I was like absolutely not our own Larry Gaga that will go on Google and type it and we'll see it and we yeah. also I was world. wrong mm -hmm. I was so wrong I typed in Larry Gaga on Google and I see everything to we do also with had Lady world. Gaga world wanted yeah. to have his name as world but you yeah. realize that if you chose world anyone who googled world will see all sorts of things so you yeah. changed it all to, dub, to you mm -hmm. so has that like Leila said has it messed up your search I think at the initial stages when there you know wasn't that much information about me online then I guess that's when you get that but now if you search MKO Dubai based singer for example or, or MKO, MKO artist, artist etc you'd find it that's quite good a fair bit. <laughs> <laughs> of all the places in the world to live in Dubai is such a beautiful city for holiday. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could live there. Mm -hmm. You know, I have family that live there, but I don't know if I could live there. Why did you choose to live in Dubai? Well, just like you stated, yes, I did go as a tourist. And then, you know, fortunately for me, I suppose, my cousin introduced me to a friend of hers from the UK who um, runs a, a firm in, 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 in Dubai. So we went out a few times, you know, one conversation led to the other, and that sort of led to my first job in Dubai. And ever since, it's been, you know, one success story to the other. So it was never quite where I intended to, you know, to have to live. But it, it just worked out. So why not? And it's, like you said, it's beautiful. It's a great place. And you'll be surprised if you spend a few days, I mean, a couple more times in Dubai, you might get used to it. Forget about the glitz and glamour. It's, you know, the, the, the beauty of being in Dubai is the fact that it's very diverse and you get to learn about other people's culture without having to go to you know, those countries, etc. And the thing is, we've had a lot of Nigerian artists that have actually come out from Dubai. We've had Santi, we've had like all the LOS boys, mm -hmm. Briss B, all of them. Mm -hmm. What is the music industry like over there? Um, so UAE in general is not your traditional Arab country. So the music scene in Dubai or in the UAE is, is brilliant, it's phenomenal. I mean, you have the Formula One, you have the Red Fest, the XB, and, you know, the band just went for a different show and he had two gigs just from there. And that's how popular Afrobeat, I'm going to stick to Afrobeat, is quite, is, is quite known. I mean, if Afrobeat can have that level of um, um, awareness in Dubai, then how much more, you know, the pop culture of the US, etc. So, yeah, it is well um, accepted. I mean, if I'm still there. And, know, <laughs> and the guys you've mentioned, I know yeah. a few of them, you know. So, yeah, it's well accept accepted. And I, yeah, so... <laughs> so you mentioned that you got your first job, you know, mm -hmm. it's, you stumbled into staying in Dubai by getting a job there. Mm -hmm. So what is your day job like? Right, so... Uh, <laughs> when you're not being a singer, what are you doing? Yeah, I, I work for a company where we provide in-house HR solutions to quite a few oil and gas industries and social media companies. And, and how are you able to balance that stuff. out? Well, um, I had that question this morning on an interview. Well, the thing is, I always say it takes, you know, dedication, passion and... And, and you have to make time available. 
make time available in the sense that when you're passionate about what you what you what you're trying to pursue you will definitely have the time to get it you know you find a balance and discipline makes a huge difference as well because I've worked with this current company because I've you know I've moved since the first job um, I've worked with them to a point where they've understood that I have a passion and you know I can give my time 100% from you know 9 a.m. that I'm at work until 5:30, and once I'm out of the office, that's it. The rest of the time is mine, and that's where the discipline comes in. And when I go for shows, I always ensure that at the latest 2 a.m. I'm out, so I can get some sleep for about four hours prior to getting ready for work. And you know, once I'm able to find that, once you're able to find that balance. You'll be okay. It's That's a lot. Good but, yeah. discipline, though. That's good Thanks. discipline. I wish we all had that. I certainly do not. <laughs> but <laughs> let's backtrack a bit. Let's speak about your music career. Mm. Where did this stem from? Where did your passion for music stem from? I would give kudos to my to my old boy, my dad. Um, so growing up, I used to, you know, I used to listen to the classics, and he made sure of that. You know, like good music were being played in the house, and anything from from home, you had the likes of the fella, the and you had the likes of the, the Beni Zaube. Like, whatever the case may be, you're listening to music which had amazing lyrical content. And that's what, you know, propelled me to at least write good music. Let's, you know, and then the singing comes into play. Um, so, and I've written for a few people prior to me doing music now. So I guess the passion started from listening to good music, singing to great songs as with, you know, that plays with your mind at such a very young age. You know, I guess I got into it seriously much later. I suppose it was because of work and everything else. But, you know. Since we are th talking about the beginning of your career, mm -hmm. let's talk about your life as a little boy. <laughs> I hear an accent somewhere. <laughs> so I want to know, where did you grow up? Um, how was growing up, for, like, uh, growing up like for you? Growing up for me, um, I, and I would still say I'm growing up, has been phenomenal. And that's because I'm from a big family. So I'm from a family whereby we don't quite need friends. So we, we do stuff, you know, amongst us and think about a family of nine and we all have friends here and there. So it's my friends, my brother's friends, everyone come into the house and it's just a full house and my mom would just like pots and everything. It's just, you know, so and anyway, backtracking, growing up was, was great and there are certain values that, you know, my, my parents sort of put into us and that's valuing people and understanding the importance of being together, being there for someone like, for example, this trip, I was at a wedding of a friend prior to coming to the AMVCA. So, you know, it's just that sort of values. That's what uh, I had. And which countries did, have you grown <laughs> up in? Nigeria. So, yeah, Nigeria. Have you ever lived Niger in the UK? Nigeria is home for me. No, never lived. Okay, because yeah. I can sense a tiny bit of a British accent yes, there, but it has a twang. There is a, a story to that. What yeah. is the story? <laughs> we need it. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep that we'll for keep the future. We'll keep it. <laughs> when MKO is a household name, then okay. some, some secret will be popping out. Okay, here okay. So but let's just say... Tell us yeah, about never, MKO now, then. Yeah, sure. What is MKO currently working on? Why is MKO back in Nigeria? What's going on? Right, well, um, at the moment, I'm working on a track with actually is out there with Dotman. It's called Fly Away. I love Dotman. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a video for it yet? Not yet. And that's why I'm putting it on hold. The initial plan was to release the single, let it fly for some time and then put out the video. And I, uh, a friend of mine just said to me, such a beautiful song. I think you definitely need to have a video for it at this stage. So, um, so there will be a video. I uh, look forward to uh, seeing the video. Uh, Dotman is such a talented artist as well. I fell in love with him after... Akube. Akube, yeah, yes. yeah. So his manager in the UK is a good friend of mine. So there was, there is some form of a, you know, close relationship there. And I couldn't think of anyone else better to work with than uh, Dotman, especially at this stage. Um, so yeah, that's that's my next project. And um, I have Good Loving and Relate and a bunch of other stuff. Which, and for me personally, I. I was watching you guys talk about people's resolution and stuff. For me personally, one of mine was to travel more, you know, within Africa and, you know, explore Africa for the beauty Olive of Olive and I represents. are looking at each other like, <laughs> we've been speaking about shaking. this since when? <laughs> We're sitting really? on top of this table, you're shaking. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all spend a lot of time, you know, going to other places when there is so much to 
to see in, in actually the first time I met you like Leila was in Ghana for, yeah. for the um, the Gleet uh, fashion show and um, you know my friends in that country is just you know and I guess it, it I guess it has to do with being in a place like Dubai where you meet people from different cultures you you turn to you know embrace it and understand that is an extension of where you are also from if that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. How can people follow you on Instagram, find out what you're up to? We have your video, Good Loving, which we're going to play in oh, a bit. So cool. how can people follow you? Well, um, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at MKO Niger Boy, which is MKO number 9, J-A-B-O-Y. Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, MKO Niger, Niger Boy. Boy. Yeah, that's, okay. that's where I am on, on Instagram. And, you know, I... I do have a lot going on right now, especially, like I said, traveling. So it would be nice for people to sort of be involved in that journey. Oh, okay, we'll quick one. Okay, Your favorite sure. African city? My favorite African city? Yes. Well, I'm going to say Lagos, yeah? yeah aside <laughs> from Lagos. Aside from Lagos. Aside from, aside from Lagos, Accra is amazing. I love okay. Accra. I Accra is there. just Okay, let me turn down the hype before my Niger brothers. <laughs> but Accra is amazing. No, it yeah, is. You know, it is. Yeah, especially it is. when you can experiment with food. We look forward <laughs> to coming to Dubai, Leila, and I, so that you can actually flex us. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.